Hello, everyone. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Friends and enemies, <laughs> welcome to Wadek. Uh, did you have a nice evening last night? Awesome. So, um, I'm Emanuele. I'm your humble GTK developer, and I labor day and night and over the weekends to bring to you uh, your favorite toolkit. Uh, cute. Sorry, GTK. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, basically, I'm making sure that you can write your applications and uh, make beautiful ones that attract new users and possibly hoodwink them into becoming maintainers. So today we are going to talk about a little bit one of the key things that GTK does for you, which is layout, and some of the changes that landed in this development cycle for the next major version of GTK. Um, some of the changes impact how you use your GTK, but um, and especially how you uh, write new widgets, um, not just use them. Ideally, none of the changes should be really hard to adapt for, last famous words. Um, but we also have uh, some tooling that will help you uh, to port your widgets from GTK3 to GTK4 in possibly mostly pain-free ways. Um, again, let's hope. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, it's a good time now to take stock of what changed inside GTK. So you can be prepared when the time comes to port your applications to the new API. So, shameful plug, hello and welcome to the history of GNOME. Um, so, some terminology. Um, every UI element you have on your application must have a size. Um, pretty obvious, um, but um, if you don't have a size, you cannot draw your content, you cannot uh, position other uh, UI elements relative to them, and you cannot like get input. Uh, having a one by one like window is not a great UI uh, for our users. Um, alongside, alongside size comes position. Um, it's typically relative to the top level of the window, um, but it can be also absolute and things like that. Uh, for the sake of simplicity throughout this thing, we are gonna say that the origin of the entire coordinate system is at the top left uh, and the x-axis is positive in that direction and the y-axis is positive in this direction. So, and each UI element is kind of a box. So. Uh, Another point of like terminology, layout flows in two directions. Uh, in order to know how big a UI element wants to be, you have to ask its, con it has to ask its contents, uh, which recursively have to ask their own child widgets and so on and so forth. And once we have the size for everything, we go from the top to the bottom and assign that size to each UI element. So. So now for the history bit. Uh, back in the glorious days of GTK 1 and 2, long before the fall, uh, GTK widget had two simple functions, uh, GTK widget size request and GTK widget size allocate. The size request function computed a size for each widget and the size allocate function uh, assigned that size to each widget relative to the parent GTK window because we like making things complicated. So those were the good days. Turns out that good really just means simple. Uh, for instance, GTK 1 and 2 did not have the concept of a minimum size, so you could literally just assign, under allocate its goal, or you could assign a one by one pixel wide box to any widget, and what happens? Who knows? Um, it's basically just you could do it and you could resize a window down to the minimal like visible 
line or point, and that was perfectly possible. Uh, sadly, there is a thing we call text, and our UIs are full of it. Uh, so as soon as you start like letting text reflow, wrap, ellipsize, and basically do what text does, um, you cannot just have a minimum size. Just you cannot um, just have a size. You have to have a minimum size, uh, preferred size, and you also have to have a minimum and preferred size in the opposite direction. So, um, for instance, if you have a dialog window and you don't want its content to be a single continuous line that goes from edge to edge of the screen, you probably want to have a way to determine the, size, the height of the text that you can reach. Um, that for GTK 1 and 2 wasn't really a big deal because, well, GTK 1 mostly, because we didn't have good text rendering. Um, it was all ASCII because seven bits are good for everyone, as far as I know. And everyone here is an American, right? But it's fine. Um, so we ended up introducing Pango, which introduced the concept of non-Latin glyphs because apparently there are more people that use non-Latin alphabets than there are people that use the Latin alphabet. Who knew? Um, but also that implied like reflowing text in a very specific ways and like combining like glyphs and stuff and it wasn't simple anymore. So GTK3 introduced the concept of a minimum and natural or preferred size and the ability to specify the size in one direction and the opposite direction. Um, sadly, when this stuff landed in Git, um, well, no, it was Subversion at the time. Well, it landed in Subversion. And it was not the best thing that happened to the code base and the API. Let's just put it like this. Uh, there was a combinatorial explosion of virtual functions and function. So instead of size request, you had get preferred width, get preferred height, get preferred width for height, and get preferred height for width. Uh, every single implementation I've seen of these functions just call an internal function that does everything. Uh, so why do we have four functions for them? Um, it made sense at the time. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Um, on top of that, we also had to replicate the exact same thing for uh, non-widgets that are visible, so cell renderers, and suddenly cell renderers became a lot like widgets in a sense that nobody knows how to make them work. Um, luckily, this all at the effect of changing the size requisition, so the preferred size of our widgets. The size allocation didn't really have to change. Uh, it's still like, here's a box, apply it to take it and set a box for your children or whatever. It's had to change a little bit, but not that much, luckily. Um, at this point, I think we have to just go through the fact that I assume all of you know that GTK uses nested boxes to like create layout um, instead of positioning your children, the children of like every single uh, UI control, uh, like in absolute coordinates on a grid, unless you are using GTK fixed, which apparently a lot of people are, and I have no idea why. Well, probably they enjoy their like UIs to break horribly when the font size changes. I don't know, maybe. I mean, everyone, I, I'm not king shaming or anything, so. Um, so, apart from that particular edge case, um, basically when you look at every GTK application under the inspector, you will see a lot of nesting there, the hierarchy, basically lots of boxes. And how many boxes could your layout contain? 
And the answer is none, none more boxes. But of course, it's not just like general layout, is that it doesn't happen just at the macro level of your application, it also happens at the micro level of the uh, complex widgets of your application. So let's say you have a search entry with an icon, a text entry, and a button to search the term next. Uh, you could recreate the widgets every single time, or you can create your composite widget, um, which instantiate every single widget inside that particular container. At that point, because you want to style it differently, like have a CSS element for it or whatever, it's basically gonna have to have an actual like G-object type. Um, you have different options to do that. The first option is you inherit from one of the GTK containers. Um, the upside is you don't have to do basically anything more because you already have everything you need. But the downside is so do every single people that, every single person that uses your widget. Um, suddenly people will be able to add new widgets to your search entry and you did not prepare for it because um, inheritance is a triple edged sword. It's your use case, their use case, and the unintended use case. Um, behind door number three, we have a compromise. Uh, you inherit from an abstract class, a base abstract class, like GTK widget, and you add a layout container to it, like a box, and then you pack stuff into the box, but basically this has the upside of hiding your widget, the, the nested hierarchy, but then you get to re-implement everything uh, because you don't have anything. Except they lied because you cannot like, subclass GTK widget, you have to subclass like GTK bin, at which point you still have to redo everything because suddenly people can replace the children that you internally created and with their own and you're basically screwed. So how do we fix this? Um, we fi in GTK4, we fixed it by introducing a concept of a layout manager, which is a delegate object. Um, the responsibility of the layout manager is basically just to position and size and um, allocate every single child that it gets assigned to. There are no container virtual functions to uh, override. There are no, um, there is no exposing of the layout policy you can just have an actual like opaque GTK widget with a layer manager and ignore everything else. Um, unlike magnets, GTK layout managers are actually easy to understand. Um, it is not the case anymore of every container having, being a layout manager, but having a layout manager. So it's not an easy, but it has. Um, you can set it inside your class initialization function. You can instantiate it and override it at instance initialization function. You can change it at runtime because we like making things complicated. And instead of calling into the GTK guts, uh, GTK widget guts, you uh, call into the GTK layout manager API. And that's it. With that came the removal of one of the worst features of GTK ever introduced, um, child properties. So child properties are terrible in many, many ways because they are um, a side growth inside GTK container. Um, they use the same internal API as GObject but for its own properties, but they are completely separate. Um, it's bad. So job properties are not great, but this, in this case, they're pretty, pretty bad. Um, this is why I drink. Um, GK4 that drops the entire thing, doesn't have child properties anymore. Um, we create objects when a child widget is added to the parent container. That object has its own properties that you can access and change and whatever else. You can introspect them. They work like G-object properties because they are G-object properties. Um, 
since child properties were used inside GTK 3.2 and 3 to um, expose layout properties like the spacing or between like rows and columns and a bunch of other things, um, GTK Layout Manager has the same concept. Uh, it creates um, layout child uh, instances and you can add properties to them. You can define them uh, inside your class in it and basically it's much more what you would expect things to work in a G-object based uh, API. Um, of course, this wouldn't mean anything if we didn't actually port our own code base to this new layer manager. So GDK for ships with um, all the classic containers that we have, so bin, box, grid, and fixed, um, using layout managers internally and having them as public API. So you can reuse that. Um, the layout managers are not derivable, so we'll, you will not be um, surprised by internal changes on how the layout actually works. It's uh, much more um, predictable. And since you don't have to subclass them, you can just take them as they are and not worry about anything. But also we have a couple of like additional custom layout managers. Um, one is called literally GTK custom layout. It's a C convenience API just mostly meant to um, help you port your complex widgets to the new API by just um, replacing the virtual function, calling the functions that you have inside your own widget inside of subclassing GTK layout manager. Uh, it's the only API because subclassing a type, a G object type in high level languages like Python, JavaScript, or even Rust is not as dire as subclassing is in C. And some in other GTK widgets like GTK overlay have their own layout manager that is uh, private, but maybe we can replace it with GTK bin because GTK bin layout does exactly the same thing as GTK overlay layout, except for the fixed positioning, but we already have a fixed positioning thing, so maybe you can merge a bunch of, of stuff. So the porting is, again, try not to be super complicated. If you have an internal class, uh, uh, your own widget that uses a GTK box or a GTK bin or a GTK grid internally, you can remove the internal child and use the layout manager directly and you suddenly don't have to deal with uh, inheriting from a bin or a box. You can just inherit from GTK widget now. So if you remember the example from before, we don't have a GTK box anymore. We have a box layout and all the widgets there. So the other thing that we added is this. And I will be happy not to talk about constraints anymore for my entire life. Um, so layout managers as they are right now, they don't absolve you from having to pack everything into boxes. Um, you still have to do that because that's our model. But it would be great if we could just express relationships between widgets instead of having to nest them inside boxes. So we could get rid of all the intermediate containers that are there just to impose a layout. Um, turns out that a lot of people in the GUI space thought of this um, a long time ago. And in 2011, the first big announcement of a, a constrained layout based UI toolkit was announced by Apple for iOS 6 and 7. It's called Auto Layout. Um, it was based on concepts developed for, um, ironically, uh, Unix window manager uh, uh, in 1998, 1999, something like, something like that. Um, basically, instead of defining like, 
instead of defining the position uh, and size of your widgets by either packing them or computing the size and everything, uh, you express a relationship between edges or points inside the widget. So, that helps when you have a very non-uniform UI target. Um, so if you're targeting like your, a single computer screen, it's perfectly fine. Um, if you're targeting like six devices with different resolutions and different orientations, then you don't want to specify the layout for each and every one of them uh, because it's a mess. So you try to be as symbolic as possible so that the layout will recompute itself for you uh, without having to like change orientation inside your widgets or something like that. Um, this kind of uh, layout mechanism got progressively more integrated inside like uh, UI toolkits. It's used on Android now. It's used on the web. Uh, it was the basis of the original Flexbox, but then got replaced by uh, something that looks a lot like GTK layout in, in CSS. Um, I'll save you the whole discussion on the algorithm that we're using because it, A, it's fairly technical, and B, it, it's a fun little excursion on like optimization theory and problems of maximum and minimum. Um, but is also an excursion on how reading code in C, reading C++ code written 1998 for an academic paper will melt your brain through your eyeballs. And I strongly recommend it. <laughs> so a constraint is composed of a bunch of elements, um, a target, a target attribute, um, a relation between the target and target attribute and the source and the source attribute, a multiplier, a constant, and a strength. It's a representation of a linear like expression if you're inclined into going down the rabbit hole, but it's basically this. It's a relationship between two, attribu two attributes on a target and a source uh, widget, or UI element, sorry. Um, in equation form, the target attribute is equal to the source attribute times the multiplier plus a constant. As an image, you can see the end of the red is separated by the beginning of the blue by eight pixels or eight units. And this is how we read it. Um, since there are relations and not equalities, uh, which means that both sides get computed at the same time to satisfy the relationship. Um, you can just switch them around. So you can read it as the beginning of the blue box is equal to the end of the red, uh, the end of the red one uh, plus eight, or the end of the red is equal to the start of the blue minus eight. Uh, use the first one because for readability's purpose, it's better to have positive constants and uh, integral multipliers than it is to have fractionary multipliers and negative constants. But it's just convention. Uh, another thing that constraint layouts have uh, is a guide. Uh, sometimes you just want to have like empty space that is in, that has constraints on itself, so minimum sizes or it's aligned to other places. In theory, you could use like an empty widget, like an empty label. We use them a lot in GTK to pad out stuff, uh, or a borderless frame, or whatever. Um, adding a new widget to the scene graph is not great, so let's just add empty space, but it's, um, but we can make it, make it, make the layout handle this empty space like it were a widget and we call this kind of empty space a guide. Like widgets, guides have a minimum and natural size, but also since they don't contain anything, they can also have a maximum size because we don't have to care about like text inside going out of the, uh, of the area. 
and I like glided a little bit over the strength, but um, so every constraint is placed inside a system and the system gets solved by magic. Don't, don't think too hard about it. But like every single like problem of optimization, it can have like multiple solutions that are equally valid or it can have no solutions at all. Uh, which means that you need a way to influence the order in which the equations are solved or in, again, magic. Um, and we call that like factor, that parameter, we call it strength. Um, a constraint can be required, so in order to solve the layout, you have to solve that particular constraint. You have to solve means like assigning every single value and getting value out. Um, but also you can have constraints that are like strongly preferred or uh, if you can get around solving this, that's fine by me. Um, it's called strong, medium, weak. Uh, you can interpolate between the values because they are a continuum, continuous value and not like precise um, factors. So you can nudge the constraint layout to solve things uh, a little bit better. Uh, you can push the layout towards a solution that is what you want and not like random noise. So the main advantage of a constraint based layout is that you don't need to pack all UI controls into boxes and you, it means that you have fewer graph traversals when you're drawing, when you're doing input, when you're doing CSS, when you're doing uh, anything really. So the best way to do better work is to do less work. Of course, it's not all unicorns and rainbows, otherwise I have a bridge to sell you. Um, things like first and last and nth child in CSS uh, selectors is, are not possible with layout constraint because the layout is solved at the end of the process and not at the CSS level. And the order in which you put, you add the children to your parent container doesn't matter at all um, because only the constraint um, that you specify will determine where the children end up. Um, constraint layouts do not scale linearly. Um, so the more widgets and the more constraints you shove into them, the more time it will be needed to solve the layout. Um, and of course you get, as I said before, the possibility of unsolvable or uh, ambiguous layouts. So basically we're not going to replace every single like list box with a ton of constraints because that is, or every a massive grid with tons of constraints because that will very likely be slower than just adding a grid layout. Um, specialized ad hoc layouts will probably beat every um, constraint based layouts every single time. It's a fact of life. So uh, if you want to switch, just you have to be careful, measure what you're getting into and what you're getting out of the layout and then decide whether or not to switch. So we described like constraints as linear equations, but um, how do we do that in code? It's kind of pretty simple. This is how you describe a layer, um, how to use a layer manager, a constraint layer manager. Yeah, yeah. C is really, really, really verbose. Anyway. Incidentally, I added the, lar the longest function name in GTK by committing the constraint layout API. Take that GTK cell layout box, I think. Well, anyway. So this is the description of the constraint that we had um, earlier. 
the start of the blue is equal to the end of the red times one plus eight and it's required. Constraints are immutable after creation, so once you created them, they are done and you cannot change the attribute or the targets. You can only remove them and they will be dropped. Um, I use the start and end, they are, uh, the start and end attributes are uh, dependent on the text direction, so start in left to right languages will be the left edge, in right to left will be the um, right edge, and the end vice versa. So you don't have to like do weird um, conditional. Um, constraints can also be constant, so in this case we say that the width of the blue element has to be greater than or equal to 250 pixels and we, are, we feel strongly about it. Um, you can also use a null target or a null source that, that is basically a shorthand for the widget that uses the constraint layout. So if you don't have the parent widget at the time, it doesn't matter. We can just say this is going to be um, replaced by the parent container. And then you have the like, add, remove, and remove all constraints from the layer manager, just management. Of course, this would be absolutely terribly boring to do. It's a lot. A lot of constraints are a lot of code. So we can use GTK Builder to describe the constraints inside um, XML because XML is amazing. So again, target blue start equals red and constant eight and required. It's pretty trivial to, to see. And you can also con uh, describe the guides like this. This is the fun part. <laughs> uh, VFL, it's visual format language. Uh, if you were in Manchester in 2017, uh, my good friend Martin um, did a talk about this uh, back at the, um, back at Endless, we uh, wrote a GK3 con constraint layout manager for um, the endless applications. And since we wanted to have fun with it, we added the VFL, which is a visual format language and was introduced by Apple. Basically, it's a, the child of Perl format strings and ASCII art. <sighs> yeah. Apple and usability, right? They're, they're bad at it. It's, it's basically a write once like UI format, UI description format. It's a bunch of like symbols to describe a layout in its entirety and the API will generate all the constraints for you in a way that you don't have to think about it that much. Of course, again, it's a write only format. It's, you're not meant to take that take that code or like the XML and generate VFL for you, that would be wrong. I mean, look at this. So this is a row of layout. Uh, the close button is separated by the edge of the parent container uh, by default spacing, separated by an entry, which must be at least 250 pixels, and then separated by the default spacing between two buttons that are squished next to each other, and then that is the end of the um, row. Yikes. This is even better. Uh, I, yeah, I don't have time to go through all of this. This is, yeah. But this is what you will see inside some Apple applications for iOS or Mac. Amazing, right? So, integrating layer managers and constraints into like our current tooling is kind of a big point to help you 
move your code towards GTK4. So this tool is amazing. It basically takes your XML file, GTK builder, UI descriptions, and it will turn them from GTK3 to GTK4. We use that internally for GTK to port all our UI templates. It's great. It will fix all the visibility, like widgets are not visible by default, my UI sucks. It just turns them around and it's perfect. Yeah, it will fix your entire UI. We, we don't need you, Alan, anymore. Sorry. <laughs> um, but also will like turn all the child properties inside your XML files into layered properties. Um, and it will uh, validate the entire thing for you as well. Again, thanks Matthias because this is a great tool. Um, all the layer properties are visible inside the inspector so you can see them and modify them and tweak them and do your things. Um, Constraint layout managers are also observable, which means that we know how many constraints and our type, the type of constraints, and we also know the guides uh, inside of the constraint layout. Um, it, like word of advice, turning that out, uh, turning that on, is uh, performance like could be better. Uh, sadly, our data structures are not that great um, when it comes to list models, so. Uh, it can have a performance impact, but the overall idea is that you can see what happens inside the constraint layout manager. And we also have a constraint editor, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, you can visualize the constraints and then generate the XML for you and import them into your application. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> yes, maybe, who knows? I mean, Glade hasn't been part of the GTK4, no, sorry, GTK4 yet, so. Well, um, the plumbing is already there, so in theory, you should be portable. Do we want to port it? Do we want to have something better? Okay. Um, don't know. So, what's missing from all of this? Um, mostly convenience API. Um, we don't have that many GTK applications ported, so um, we don't know how we can like shave the rough edges from the from the current API. Um, so, start porting your application, please. Um, Porting more layer widgets to uh, porting more containers to layer managers, again that would be that would be cool. Um, from the constraint layout perspective, being able to reference widgets from different constraint layouts. So if you have like a constraint layout on this side and a constraint layout on this side, you can you could in theory reference a widget from both sides of the of the UI. So you could have like, I want this widget in this form here to be the same width as this widget in this form here. Uh, that would help us replace things like GTK size groups, uh, which are terrible. Um, yeah, probably uh, like updating the constraint editor to be more user friendly, more developer friendly. Um, I mean, it was, it's amazing, but it was also a quick like thing. Uh, so more features there would be helpful for, uh, for application developers. Um, so I guess the, the gist of the entire thing is start porting your applications uh, and give us feedback. Otherwise you're stuck with it. And I will not accept complaints. So thank you for being a wonderful audience. And if you have any questions. Yeah. So the constraints, are they uh, 
completely done on a per container basis or is there any like per top level constraint handling? So um, at the like the implementation currently has a single constraint layout per top level, which means that it should be possible to reference widgets from different like branches of the graph. Um, the last time I tried the the ordering of the layout mattered a lot. So if we had a widget that was sized before, if we had a, a target that was sized before the source, we ended up in a reference cycle and that those are hard to break. Um, of course, you wouldn't notice that because your UI would be completely broken. Um, and then you can just flip the conditions around or something like that. But in theory, it's possible because we have a single constraint solver for every top level. And, and does it respect size groups? No. Yeah, so you just don't need to ignore it. Sorry. Size groups are uh, act on the preferred size. So technically speaking, yes. In theory, we respect size groups just as well as any other part of GTK. That is a very low bar. I'd, I'd honestly like remove that API. It's terrible, but the um, but I wouldn't do it before we can actually cover eighty percent of what it does, because the remaining twenty percent is crazy. Any more questions? Hello, hi. Uh, I got quite excited when I heard about constraints. Right. Uh, assuming I'd be able to make arbitrary expressions with different parts of different elements, I was quite horrified to see these simplistic kind of uh, linear equations or linear expressions. So I was wondering if you could explain why there are these uh, restricted uh, expressions. So. Um, you cannot use like random expressions to express constraints between elements. Um, that is not how this works at all. Um, Why? I want I want arbitrary expressions. No. Um, you will not get them. <laughs> uh, so the entire idea is we hide the fact that they are linear expressions because nobody here, well, unless there are, are there any maths major here? Apart from you. <laughs> okay, so I will not ask if there are like applied maths major that are like expert in, expert in optimization theory. Good, so this is representative of anybody that writes a UI. Um, uh, if you, want to land into the let's add a custom like expression with random like parameters and stuff, uh, then you are a very, very tiny, 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 tiny niche of a niche. Um, I don't want to cater to you. Uh, I'm, I'm like bloody serious here. Um, the overall idea is that we hide this implementation detail because maybe in five years time there is a breakthrough and somebody proves that p equals num np, um, at which point we can have parabolic constraints solving mechanisms. And we have four dimensional UIs that will basically just summon ancient evil from the depth of the sea. Um, if that happens and we maintain our sanity, then we might want to change the implementation details of GTK constraint layout. Um, I wouldn't count that, <laughs> but the, the overall idea is that we only have the ability to express relation, direct relations, relationships between two um, attributes on a box because that's what our UI looks like at any point in time. Um, we can do things like 
tweaking the uh, constant that we add for animations, we can probably tweak the multiplier. But at the end of the day, that is our typical UI. So maybe we'll make the GTK Constraint Solver public API, and then I will personally ship a shotgun to your house so you can shoot yourself in both feet at the same time. That's pretty much the best I can do. So what Alex said is there are theoretical problems like solving systems of nonlinear equations that might require P equals NP to be solved in your lifetime or the lifetime of the universe. So, I mean, pros and cons. Just cur curious, have you Try, I'm sure you have, but, but a, a moderately complex layout in, with GTK3 and you grab the side and go with the mouse and it resizes as compared to port it to GTK4, do the same thing. Is it as smooth and quick or does it drag down on a moderately powered computer? What's the... Um, so, in theory, it should be fine. So... We, uh, we have instrumented the entire like, solver uh, to get like, timing information out of it. And possibly when we grow up, we will use uh, Christian's like, probes to get timing into sysprof. Um, the timing to solve like, complex layouts is not that huge. It's reasonably fast. I mean, uh, sub-frames fast, sub-single frame, so 16 milliseconds fast. Um, it's hard to give you a precise answer because it said uh, the layouts do not um, scale linearly. They scale with a combination of the widgets, the amount of constraints that you have inserted. And if you, we, we try like, uh, I think Matthias tried adding like a thousand items on a grid. Yeah, uh, a thousand items on a grid, and that kind of ground everything to pretty much a halt. But that was because, well, there are like multiple things. Adding a thousand widgets to any grid is currently, yeah, not great anyway. And the layout becomes, like as I said, non nonlinearly uh, more complex. Um, but there are other cases where you have like, like a complex UI layout that is currently non possible with GTK Grid. So, for instance, uh, you have a grid with a bunch of widgets straddling the column and row edges. So, they have like non, non integer um, edges between like uh, attach points. So, like, for instance, you have like three rows and three columns, right? and you want a widget to have 1.5 rows instead of like two or three or one. Um, you can do it with um, the constraint layout because you can size things like that. Um, in which case, it's gonna be faster than a GTK grid by the fact that it's not possible in GTK grid. <laughs> but the overall idea is it's hard to give you a, a complete and accurate answer because of the non-linear modeling of the entire thing. But it's, it's fast enough, I'd say. So we still have one, oh, one minute left, so probably one more question. Okay. Okay, thanks, then. Sorry, sorry. So There's still one more fun. question there. No, I just wondered if you had any demos or anything to show. <sighs> demos and presentations are not great combinations. Um, sadly, my GDK tree is non-working at the moment. So I cannot show you the constraint editor. You can catch me at, during the conference if you, if you see me just 
ask me and I will, I will try to show you the constraint editor. Okay, then I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much. It is, by the way, we'll, we'll, be have, we'll be having coffee break, all right, 10 minutes later at 10.30. for also will work. <laughs> 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 